Okay, so this is our fourth video on um, transformations, and here we want to look at using matrices for transformations. Now, this is really the only reason that matrices still remain in the methods course, because we need to be able to work with them with transformations. Essentially, it's just about having an understanding of how matrices and simultaneous equations work together, because what we, um, what we end up with when we do our transformations from first principles is we end up with two little simultaneous equations for x dash and y dash and x and y and we can convert those and we can write those as a matrix equation. Um, so for example if we are dilating by a factor of k from the y-axis we are multiplying the x coordinate by k which means that x dash is equal to kx and y dash is equal to k and so in order to help us create the matrix equation we can say that means that x dash is k times x plus zero lots of y, and y dash is zero lots of x plus one lot of y, okay? And so therefore, we can convert that to this matrix equation. Here's your matrix of coefficients, k, zero, zero, one, okay? Multiplied by x, y is equal to x dash, y dash. And so this multiplying a point by this matrix would have the effect of dilating that point from the um, y-axis by a factor of k. We can see the same with the dilation by a factor of k from the x-axis. This times it's this time it's k times the y-coordinate. So that is x dash equals x and y dash equals ky, which we can write as x dash equals x plus zero y and y dash equals zero x plus ky. So we can get our coefficient matrix one zero zero k, which is here. And if we multiply that by x, y, which is any point, we get the image of that point. Okay. Reflections, um, same kind of idea. Sorry. Um, reflecting in the x-axis, the y-coordinates are negative. We get these two simultaneous equations, x dash equals x plus 0y and y dash equals um, 0x minus y. And so our matrix of coefficients is 1, 0, 0, negative 1, which is what we've got here. If we multiply any point x, y by that matrix, we end up with the image of x and the image of y under a, a reflection in the x-axis. Reflecting in the y-axis, x-coordinate becomes negative, so there's our negative there. Our matrix of coefficients is negative 1, 0, 0, 1, because we're multiplying the x value by negative 1. Okay. We can also add into here a reflection in the line y equals x because we know when, when we reflect in the line y equals x, which is what we do when we find an inverse function, the x and y values switch around. So in this case, x dash ends up equaling, so the image of x is y, and the image of y is x. Okay. And if we flesh out those equations, that is, uh, if x dash equals y, that we can write that as x dash equals 0 times x plus y, whereas y dash equals x plus 0 times y. And so we get... 0, 1, 1, 0, so this time the ones on the non-leading diagonal of the matrix, which has the effect of switching around the x and y values. And finally, the translations, they're simply an addition at the end, so all the dilations and reflections, you're going to be multiplying by 2 by 2, multiplying each point by a 2 by 2 matrix. If we want to translate by vector AB, okay, vector AB means up A, no, sorry, that's affecting the x-coordinate, right A and up B. Okay, so for example, if you were adding on negative 2, 3, you'd be going left 2 and up 3. Okay, so the vet translation by vector AB means this, adding A onto the X values, adding B onto the Y values, um, which means our equations become X dash equals X plus A and Y dash equals Y plus B, which we can simply write as a matrix equation by basically doing that x dash equals x dash y dash equals x y plus a b okay and that will result in these two equations if we expand that out okay so i don't want you to focus on you don't need to learn these okay you don't even need to the key all you really need to be able to do is expand out the matrix equation that you're given to get back to the equations for x dash and y dash which gets you back here and so then you can interpret the sequence it's really all you need to be able to do. Um, it's essentially being able to get back to your equations connecting x and y to x dash and y dash as quickly as possible so you can use the process that you're now familiar with from the last couple of videos. Okay, so 
To my mind, the reason this is in the course is to prevent VCAR in the exams having to list out a sequence of transformations. Those questions can become very wordy and they're trying to cut down on how wordy things are. It's, it's not as fair for students for whom English is their second language. Um, and so this is a way of cutting out all those words. Um, so other than that, it's the only reason they're doing it. And the first thing I want you to do is focus on expanding it out so you can see what does X dash and Y dash equal. I've used the notation that you'll see commonly in exams. So the transformation, which is a function T that maps um, points from the Cartesian plane to other points on the Cartesian plane, is given by this. So this is T of XY, applying the transformation to XY. So this is just the image of X and the image of Y equals this. Okay. And so what we want to do is expand out this matrix equation. Okay. So if we do this multiplication, we get x dash y dash on the left equals, we do negative 3 times x and 0 times y, so that's just negative 3x. And if we do bottom row times only column, we do 0 times x plus half times y, so that's just half y, plus 2, negative 1. And from here, you can see that x dash must be equal to negative 3x plus 2, and y dash must be equal to half y minus 1. That's what you want to get to. You just want to expand out the matrix equation, be able to get your equations for x dash and y dash, and then our process is the same. Now, we want to determine an appropriate sequence of transformations, which means we want to know what x dash and y dash are, okay, x, what, what's happening to every point, and we've got that here. x dash is negative 3x plus 2, y dash is half y take away 1. And now we just want to be able to read off that sequence of transformations. So focusing on the x coordinate first, x is being multiplied by negative 3 first, so let's focus on the negative, that's the reflection. If you make the x values negative, that is a reflection in the y axis. And we've also multiplied x by negative 3, so that's it, sorry, by 3. That's a dilation by a factor of 3 from the y axis. So if we're multiplying all the x coordinates by 3, we're stretching out this way, so from the y-axis. Then we've got the plus 2, that's a translation up, oops, sorry, up by 2 units. Then if we focus on the things happening to the y variable, so that's the three transformations happening to the x variable, transformations happening to the y variable, y has first of all been multiplied by a half, so if you halve all the y coordinates, that's a dilation by a factor of one half from the x-axis. And then if you subtract one from all the y coordinates, that is a translation down by one unit. Okay, so the order of those two blue transformations is important. The order of those three yellow transformations is important, although you can interchange these two dilation and reflection. If you multiply x by negative 1 first and then by 3, it's the same as multiplying by 3 and then multiplying it by negative 1. Um, so they are interchangeable, but otherwise the translation, the yellow translation has to happen after the dilation and reflection, yellow dilation and reflection. The blue translation has to happen after the blue dilation. If you prefer to write your sequence always as dilations and reflections and translations, so I would encourage you to move away from that rigid structure. You could list it as 1 and 2, three, because these can alternate if you want, and then your two transformations, translations four and five. Again, you could alternate those two if you want, you could alternate those two if you want. Lots and lots and lots of different sequence, correct and accurate sequences of transformations. And that is one. Okay, example two. The transformation um, is defined by this matrix equation. Determine an appropriate sequence of transformations represented by T. Okay, so I'm going to expand it. I'm going to replace that T of X, Y as X dash, Y dash, the image of X and the image of Y. I'm going to focus on expanding here, but I need to be a bit careful because I've got brackets here, which actually means that this translation happens before these dilations and reflections. So we actually have, let's leave that 2 by 2 matrix, that times X plus 1, Y plus 3. All right, then we do the matrix multiplication, so row times column. So we're going to have um, 2 times x plus 1 plus 0 times y plus 3, so that doesn't matter. And then bottom row, 
times only column gives us the bottom row of our answer. 0 times x plus 1, so that's nothing, plus negative 1 times y plus 3. Okay. And so from that, we can see that x dash is equal to, now you can expand them out if you want, 2x plus 2, and y dash is equal to negative y minus 3. So we have x dash and y dash. We know now that x, y becomes x dash, which is 2x plus 2, y dash, which is negative y minus 3. And we can state the sequence of transformations just using our order of operations. So things affecting the x variables and things affecting the y variables. You could absolutely still leave this written as 2 times x plus 1, in which case you'd talk about translating to the right by 1, then dilating by 2 from the y-axis. If you left this as negative x plus 3, you would translate up by 3 and then reflect in the x-axis. Okay. So again, doesn't matter which way you choose to use it, you'll just get a different sequence of transformations, but it will still be correct. If I've expanded them out, looking at the x variable, the first thing is multiplying by 2, so that's a dilation by factor 2 from the y-axis. If you're multiplying the x-coordinates, you are stretching from the y-axis. Um, and then we've got plus 2, so that is a translation. It's the x variable adding on to the x variable, so that's to the right by 2 units. So that's our two transformations affecting our x variable. Then we can focus on the transformations affecting the y variable. Um, so y is being multiplied by negative 1 first, so that is a reflection. If you make the y values negative, you're reflecting in the x-axis. And then we take away 3, which is dilation, no sorry, not dilation, translation. Subtracting 3 from the y-coordinates, that is down by 3 units. Once again, jumble around the yellow and blue things as much as you like, except keeping the order within yellow correct and the order within blue correct. Again, alternatively, you could have written them like this and you then would have had different sequence of transformations described. Okay, example 3. This time we want to apply the transformations to a function rather than determine the sequence of the transformations. So we've got transformations defined by this trans, um, matrix equation here. Find the equation of the image of the parabola with this equation under the transformation T. Okay, so again, first thing I'm going to do is expand out my matrix equation and see what is x dash and y dash, get my two little equations. So multiplying this gives me 0 times x plus 6 times y and negative 2 times x plus 0 times y, so negative 2x. Now the first thing I'm noting here is the x and the y values have switched around. x dash is now in terms of y, which actually means one of the transformations that ha that's happened here is a reflection in the line y equals x. So we're going to be getting an inverse function, which means that the function we get won't still be a quadratic, it should be a square root function. Um, and then we've got plus negative 1, 5, and so that means that x dash is 6y plus, sorry, 6y minus 1, and y dash is negative 2x plus 5, okay? So we now know that xy becomes 6y minus 1, that's x dash, and negative 2x plus 5, okay? Now, we're actually not trying to apply, we're not trying to determine the sequence of transformations, though, which is why we would want this. Sorry, so we actually don't want that. We want to apply the transformations into this rule, which means we want x and y to be the subject here, not x dash and y dash. Okay? So if x dash equals 6y minus 1, that means that x dash plus 1 equals 6y, and so y equals x dash plus 1 over 6. And if, I might write it under here just to give me some more space, and if y dash equals negative 2x plus 5, um, y dash, oh, which way around do I want to write it, doesn't really matter I don't think, y dash minus 5 equals negative 2x, and x equals y dash minus 5 on negative 2, which is negative half um, y dash minus 5, or negative half y dash plus 5 on 2, whichever way you want to write it. So now we can apply that to our rule. So our rule is x squared plus y equals x squared plus 3. We now know that 
y is equal to that, so we'll substitute that in there, and we know that x is equal to that, and so we'll place that in there. Okay, whichever way around you would rather write it. Um, you could also, if you prefer, write it as, um, so putting that negative into the numerator, so write it as 5 minus y dash over 2, all of those would be perfectly valid. Okay, and probably some other variation, and as I said, the expanded out version as well. All right, so we've got x dash plus 1 over 6 equals um, negative 1 half, I might just leave it as the original actually, because it's going to get rearranged, y dash minus 5 over negative 2 all squared plus 3. And we can drop the dashes now that we've made the substitution, and we need to make y the subject, and here's y in here. Okay, which is where we're going to take our square root and the hence create the inverse function at some point. So I'm going to take away 3, which means I've got y minus 5 on, sorry, on negative 2 all squared equals x plus 1 on 6 take away 3. Now 3 is the same as, um, what am I doing, 18 on 6, okay? So that lets me simplify that, y minus 5 on negative 2 all squared is x minus 17 all over 6. Now let's take the square root, y minus 5 on negative 2 equals plus or minus square root of x minus 17 on 6. Multiplying by negative 2, y minus 5 equals, now negative 2 times a positive is negative, but negative 2 times a negative is positive, so we're still going to have plus or minus 2 root x minus 17 on 6, and then we can add 5, so y equals plus or minus 2 root x minus 17 on 6 plus 5, okay. Um, now it doesn't say, it's the image of the parabola, the parabola is not restricted, so we are still going to have, it's not It's not an inverse function, we are still going to have both the square roots because the inverse of the parabola when we reflect it in y equals x will still be, you know, both halves of the square root. So that would be our final answer. Okay, and then I think lastly, no, we've got a couple more. Example 4. Um, this is a question that's become reasonably common in the exams, so let's have a look at this. Um, actually, no, it's more like question five that's become a bit common. Anyway, let's have a look at what we've got here. The transformation is defined by this, where A, B, C and D are non-zero real numbers. If the image of the curve y of the curve g of x equals 1 on x is f of x equals that, find the values of a, b, c and d. So we want to get to the matrix equation, which means we need to get to these equations for x dash and y dash so we can then convert back to the matrix equation. So this is exactly what we've been doing already. So we're going from y equals 1 on x, the image of g of x equals 1 on x is f of x equals 5 minus 7 on x plus 1. Okay, so this is our image function. We need them in the same shape, it's a hyperbola, so we need 1 over something, okay? So I'm going to, what am I going to do, y equals 1 on x, we don't need to do anything to that. I'm going to take away 5, y dash minus 5 equals negative 7 over x dash plus 1. And so we're going to have um, y dash minus 5 over negative 7 equals 1 on x dash plus 1. Okay, so now we can see that that is equal to that, and that x was replaced by that. So we've got y equals y dash minus 5 on negative 7, and we've got x equals x dash plus 1. Now, we need to come up with a matrix equation. This is x dash y dash. So we want x dash and y dash to be the subject. So we make y dash the subject, we multiply by negative 7, and add 5. Y sorry, y dash is negative 7y plus 5, and just taking away 1 here, so x dash is x minus 1. Okay, so let's have a look at those equations. So we now know that x dash is equal to 1 lot of x plus no lots of y take away 1, so that's that equation, okay. y dash is equal to no lots of x take away 7 lots of y plus 5. So if we convert that into the matrix equation, that is x dash y dash equals our coefficient matrix, 1, 0, 0, negative 7, times x, y, 
and then we've got these to be added on so it's going to be plus negative one five so we should now be able to go back to let me just make this smaller so we can see the whole thing and we can now see that a is equal to one that b is equal to negative seven that c is equal to negative one and that d is equal to five okay so therefore a equals one b equals negative seven so making sure we answer the question which is to find the values of a b c and d c equals negative one and d equals five there's the answer to our question okay let's just zoom that back oh, sorry and let's have a look at example five which is a past exam question the transformation um, is defined by again we don't know the transformations, unknown dilations and reflections, unknown translations. The question's essentially asking you to find the dilations and reflections and translations and be able to tell us what these numbers are. So it's about determining the sequence. If the image of the curve g of x equals that is f of x equals that. So we're going from there to there. So we've got y equals negative square root of 3x minus 2 plus 4 becoming y equals square root of x and this is the image function so we're going from the messy to the hard we still need to get them both in the same shape which means anything outside of the square root in this case that negative and that plus four is actually affecting the y variable so we're going to move them over there so it's going to be y minus four over negative one which is just negative y plus four um, equals square root of three x minus two and then it's still going to y dash equals square root of x dash. So we know that that is equal to y dash and that is equal to x dash. Okay, so we know y dash equals, I might write them in order, we know x dash equals 3x minus 2 and we know that y dash is equal to minus y plus 4. Now we're trying to find x dash and y dash, i.e. transformed x and transformed y. So x and y are the subject, that's what we want. Let's just write them in a form that can be converted to the matrix equation. So x dash is going to be 3 lots of x plus 0 lots of y take away 2. And y dash is 0 lots of x take away 1 lot of y plus 4. So our matrix of coefficients is 3, 0, 0, negative 1. And then we've got our translations on the end. So as a matrix equation, this is x dash y dash equals... 3, 0, 0, negative 1 times x, y, equal, oh, sorry, not equals, plus negative 2, positive 4. And again, we want to state the values of a, b, c, and d. We can see that a is 3, that b is negative 1, that c is negative 2, and that d is 4. So therefore A equals 3, B equals negative 1, C equals negative 2, D equals 4. It is really just about expanding out your matrix equations as quick as you can to get to these equations and do what we've always done or in going in reverse getting to these equations and turning them into a matrix equation so that you can answer your question. Okay? You do not need to wrote learn, let me go back up here, what this matrix would be doing, what this matrix would be doing, because you can always expand it out and then see it in that more familiar um, notation and familiar format that you're used to. Okay, the work today again is from um, an appendix work a worksheet in the appendix G uh, called Using Matrices for Transformations.